I'm gonna share with you in this video the secrets of when to use lists and tables in Word to improve your professional reports. My name is Chris, this is Engineered Upgrade, where I share the tools, tips, tricks, and little secrets like this that I've picked up as a consultant and an engineer over the years, the tools that I've used to cut through complex business problems and hopefully provide you with those same solutions that, that I've developed myself. So in this video, we're gonna look at when to use lists, when to use tables, in Word to make reports more readable. Uh, so we're gonna end up splitting up this chunk of text here. I don't like long paragraphs. They're hard to read and they're hard to show your client or other stakeholders what's going on. Uh, so the simple model that we've come up with here, and, and I borrowed this a bit from Google. Google captures it really well. That uh, the three cases are for lists and tables, uh, when to use a list is when you have single items such as a city or a place name or, or a list a list of single items that are represented as a bullet. Then when to use tables is when each of those items has two or more pieces of information associated with it, then you put that in a table. The overlap is here where you have a single item with a definition or an explanation next to it. Each of those can go into a list or a table. Though, I like to put it into a table or, or that, that's not true, I do like to put it into a list sometimes. It depends on the explanation, how much text there is. Particularly if it's text heavy, I like to use the table. This really helps. I found it really easy to uh, convey complex information to clients really quickly when using a list or a table to break up the flow of text. So I've got here from a recent report I wrote about railway point machines. I've got here some information about what a point machine is for a train and what it does. Now, it, it's a bit hard to follow. It's a bit complicated, particularly if you're not technically accustomed to it. And I like to write my reports so that they're accessible to the audience that I'm looking to, to write for. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're going to look at how to split up this information to a list, a table, a table with two columns, that definition or explanation table I was talking about, and also a table with a bit more data in it. So the first point here, the first thing to look out for is where in this list, we've, where in this uh, paragraph we can pull out a list. So where have we got some single items? Now in, in this paragraph I've said that these railway point machines consist of these items. So this might make a good place to start in building our list. So we can rewrite the paragraph, we rewrite the first sentence, we'll keep that. Uh, another hint from Google was to keep, it was to pr uh, precede your a list or table with a sentence to explain what's going on. It shouldn't be standalone, and, and I tend to agree. A list or table should have a little bit of an explanation beforehand just to explain what's going to be shown in the table, which allows trains to change track. So that's what point machines are. Uh, and then I'm going to say point machines consist of, and then I've got these items here. So I've, I've got these items here, this uh, drive rod, motors, a detection mechanism, and a power supply. Now, when I've got a list like this that can read as a sentence, I like to put the and in there as well, and then to finish it with a full stop. Uh, so I believe that a list should be, if it can be read as a sentence, then it should have the and and the full stop to reflect that it is a sentence. If it can't be, uh, just the commas, and then perhaps a full stop at the end without the word and. So that's how we can turn this uh, I'll highlight it in, in yellow. This sentence into a list now becomes uh, this list here. I'll just turn off these paragraph marks as well. Uh, all the formatting in this report comes from a template that I built in an earlier video. If you're interested in that video, check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, hit subscribe and YouTube will eventually suggest it to you. We're gonna look at how to put a table together too. Uh, so in the table, we've got uh, the very next sentence here describes a scenario and a definition. So the machine connects to the switch rail, which is a movable component, uh, and the stock rail, which the wheel would follow if unimpeded. So we've got there the definition of how the machine connects to the switch rail or the stock rail, uh, and that's a good candidate for using a table. So we're going to insert a table here and say, uh, we're going to call this a rail, and we're going to call this a description uh, this is the heading for the table. I'm going to use just words built in formatting. I, I can go into a better description of that another time if you're interested in how to format tables inside a professional report. Please leave a comment below uh, if that's something you're interested in seeing. So this is switch and stock. 
Uh, now I don't like to often like to use the first column, but there might be a case at some stage. So in the description we say uh, uh, movable components that forces the cha uh, train wheel to change direction. And this one we say uh, fixed components, components uh, which the wheel follows if unimpeded. So we've got here a definition that matches our, this is a quick table that can be used as a definition. Now I like to, uh, I like to have the rows in the table, the text try to align. If you feel, I often see a mistake that a uh, particular lot of young consultants make is to really pack information into a table, uh, to fill out all the rows, to fill out lots of columns in the table, when it doesn't necessarily represent the best way to convey that information to an audience. Alternatively, uh, split up your table into different sections. So you could merge the cells to split or you could split the table with some text in between to really capture, uh, to, to really convey and, and split up that information so that you're not reading a table. If you've got a whole page full of a column that has no text in it because that text was on the previous page, then your table's really not very effective and people might miss information, which, which isn't a great scenario. So uh, I've adjusted the size of the table in this case to make sure that we've got a switch, uh, to make sure that we've got the uh, item that we're describing, the rail, and we've got the description next to it as well. So this is a simple way to do a description or explanation style table. So I'll highlight this in a different color, uh, green, so that you can see this comes from this text here. So I've summarized, so I've summarized the yellow text into the list. I've summarized the green text into the table. Uh, and now we've got some data here as well. So the other type of table is where uh, you've got uh, more than two pieces of information associated with each of the items. I, I should say, first of all, we could have made this a list as well. So we could have said uh, switch is one of the bullets and then comma, a movable description. Actually, I'll just do that. So you could also summarize this as a list that says switch movable component, etc., And then you can have stock, which is fixed component, etc. cetera. Uh, for example, uh, so that's the other way to, that's why a description or definition or explanation items are kind of in the middle. They could be reflected as a list or as a table. Uh, however, when you start to get three uh, or more pieces of information associated with each of those items, definitely use a table. So in our case, we've got the location of these machines. So we're going to insert our table with three uh, columns. One is location, uh, one is the station that it's at. One is the location as a uh, mark of, of kilometers from the station. Actually, I'll just do it in there. And the other one is uh, length. Uh, we represent length as a ratio in this case. So one to seven or one to 11. So you see this information is kind of all mixed, mixed up. It's hard to tell how many machines there are, how, where they're located. It's, it's a bit of a mix. So we're going to, so I'm gonna format this table first. And again, I'm going to turn off the first column. So our first station is West Street. The length is uh, the location is 0 0.15 km and the length is 1 to 7. Then we have West Street again, uh, which is 0 0.23, 1 to 7. And North Street, which is 1.13 km, 1 to 11. And then we have South Street, uh, what did I put in here, 1.27 km. So this came from a recent report about the location of those uh, point machines. I've of course changed the station names to make it a bit more global in terms of the audience that will be watching this uh, and one to seven for the length. So uh, that's how we can put represent this information here in a table form. Uh, I won't do the highlighting this time but you can see that this information here is represented in this, in this table. It's a bit more readable now as well. Uh, we can even put in a caption, so insert caption, uh, length location and length of point machines to really drive home what this table is about and make it a bit more readable as well. So we've got our table in there. Uh, like I said, I've did all the, I set up all the formatting in this report in a previous video, so feel free to check that one out. In this one, uh, one key thing to note, so what I was talking about earlier 
where it, it's a good idea to split up tables if they're getting a bit long or if they've got too much information in them. One way we could split up this table is to make little subsections in our report. So we could have, oops, what's going on there? We could have here uh, a subheading which says West Street. And then we could have uh, location and length as our two as our two items within a table just for West Street, if it was getting too complicated. And then we could do the same with North Street. For, for example, uh, if you ever see information repeated in a table, like the way West Street is repeat, repeated twice here, that could be a good indication of when you can split up those tables into two separate ones. Uh, so that's a basic overview of when you can use tables and lists in Word and, and to really communicate professionally about the sort of data or, or information that's in your report. So to recap, lists are single items uh, with perhaps a definition or explanation following them, but really where it's a single item, uh, one listed after the next in bullet point form. Tables are where you've got two or more pieces of related information for each item and each of those pieces of related information forms the columns. Where the overlap happens is when it's an explanation or a definition to each of those items because you can represent that as either a list where it's uh, the item, comma, the explanation or definition or as a table where the two columns are the item and the definition or explanation. So I know that was a bit too much to wrap your head around. If you'd like me to take a look at some of your reports, please leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do to help you out. I've been writing professional reports like this for oh, nearly a decade now uh, and I love to share the lessons that I've learned to help other people improve uh, their communication, their writing uh, and how they get their ideas across. I'm, this channel is all about cutting through the complexity of business problems, problem solving in the office and the workplace and communicating those solutions to other people. So hit subscribe if you're interested in more hints, tips, tricks and little secrets like this to improve your professional writing and communication. My name's Chris and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.